time, and you're the first person that's seen these things. Who knows how long those things would have been there if you didn't pull it out right, right now. Even though Phil was younger than most when he first started in this hobby, his five-year-old son is now showing interest in finding treasure. My son got to an age where he actually understood that there's metal in the ground and this machine will tell you that there's metal right there, you know. And I think he's kind of hooked too. He'll ask me uh, if we can go out pretty regularly now. I think he's wonder what's down there too. I think you wonder what, you know, what we're going to find today. Many treasure hunters keep most of their hoard for sentimental reasons, but because Phil's family business is a coin and jewelry shop, he views things a little differently. When I find an old coin, I'm actually oftentimes tempted to put it out for sale here in my store. We also buy and sell jewelry, so it's, I'm kind of lucky in that way where I get to just come to work the next day and, and, and turn in what I've found. Some people save it all. Um, it, it can be really neat to have somebody just lay out years worth of finds uh, in front of you. I've never really felt uh, the urge to do that as much. As a professional seller and buyer of coins, Phil has some good advice if you find an old coin in the ground. When people find coins, the first instinct a lot of time is to clean them up. You know, they're covered in dirt. If you have anything rare, you're not going to want to scrub it up. It actually ends up hurting the value. Uh, collectors like them original. I'm not saying people want the coin with a bunch of dirt on it, but you, you, there are proper ways to uh, take care of coins. So you can go into a good reputable coin store, see if you have something rare, and ask them what should be done with that coin. Should it be cleaned or, or, or should it be left closer to the state it is now? For Phil, there's still a lot to be discovered, and his goals are high in what he'd like to find. Machines don't find diamonds, but they do find gold rings, and sometimes gold rings have large diamonds in them. So that, that's the main thing I'm looking for. When we return, we'll visit with Richard Brooks, who hunts old parks and finds silver and gold jewelry. A friend of mine who was working with me brought in his metal detector and he was looking for a lost item for somebody. We went out and started looking for it and he started finding coins. And to me it was interesting. I decided to stick with it. So it wasn't too long later that I went out and rented a White's 6000 metal detector. And I used it for about a week and I was hooked. What kept me going was the, the thrill of the search for looking for something that was lost in the ground. And it was more for the silver coins, possible gold coin, and the jewelry. Okay, we got a target. We'll go ahead and try to hit it here. Hopefully it's not a rock. Well, we lucked out on a piece of jewelry. How about that, huh? Silver, I have no idea right now what this is. It's got some kind of a hasp here with a, a hinge on it, so I don't know. But it is a piece of silver jewelry. I've learned that research is very important, and I've gone to the Oregon Historical Society, I go to Multnomah County Library, uh, and pick up books on the history of Oregon. Uh, they are priceless, really. There are places that have never been hunted. It's just that you have to find them now. The maps aren't there, the old maps. If you can find some of the old maps that go back to the turn of the century, wonderful. These are some of the items that I've found through the years, metal detecting. And uh, I'll just show you a couple of them. This is the half carat diamond ring that I've found in the Selwood parking strips. Uh, it's in very, very good condition. This is the silver eagle that was found in Washington Park. 
uh, under a tree next to a mole trap. And that's kind of a favorite with me. That was my first real ring find. Here's one gold ring. It was found at Catlin Gable School out on the soccer field. And that's an area where there's tons of jewelry in the soccer field. They get to play in soccer and things fly off the fingers or out of the pockets. While many hunt old parks, homesteads, or their own backyards, Richard has a favorite area most people might overlook. The favorite area is the parking strips, the little strip of grass between the sidewalk and the road. For some reason, that seems to hold very, very old stuff, coins, jewelry. I think they're loaded because people, when they get into their car or getting out of their car, they pull their keys out of the pocket, and if, there's a, if they've taken a ring off or they've got a coin in there, it's, it's gonna come out, it flips out, drops down, they don't notice it, and it's lost. We come by, we search, we find them. At this point in his metal detecting history, Richard is looking to pass on his knowledge and expertise to the up-and-coming detectorists. I don't think there can be any secrets in metal detecting. You want to pass everything that you learn as you go to the new people. We're teaching the beginners, the new people, how to do it right. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Treasure Hunting America. Be with us next time as we explore more stories of everyday treasure hunters around the country. Until next time, I'm Mark Hendricks. Happy hunting! Treasure Hunting America is sponsored by White's Electronics, manufacturers of the world's finest metal detectors. For over 50 years, White's has been building metal detectors in the USA for treasure hunters around the world. For more information, visit their website or call the number on your screen.